Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. I purchased headphones off of Timu so you didn't have to. How bad could they be? These are my Honest Audiophile impressions. So, my wife purchased stuff off of Timu on several occasions, and some of it's been good, some of it's been bad, some of it's been kind of, yeah, it's all right. So, I figured, hey, they sell headphones and stuff. How I, well, why not try them out? And, uh, you know, how bad can it be? I did this test so you didn't have to. So I purchased the OKCSCWTD3. OK and these will set you back $44 from your bank account. They have 40 millimeter dynamic drivers, and that's all the specs I was able to find. I do not know the impedance, the sensitivity, or the frequency response range, or any other pertinent information regarding the WTD3. Now, from a distance, you might be able to trick somebody into thinking that these are grottos, but as you get up closer, you definitely can tell these are not grottos. They are a semi-open design, and they clearly say WTD3 on them, and they also say beats the music of your soul. If you don't know which one is left and right, it also has that indicated. They do have knockoff grotto pads on them. And they have a knockoff grotto headband as well. This is very much fake leather. And then it has uh, a single piece of spring steel as your headband. Sliders are extremely hard to move. And when you just pop them on your head, they just kind of sit there. They don't really angle very well. There's not a lot of clamp force. And the cups don't move in or out. So they just kind of are flat right on the side of your head. So the seal is not very good. You do get a couple other uh, accessories. You get a removable cable. So you can replace this. It is 3.5s. Uh, going into the headphone and they are marked L and R cables fabric it's a decent cable actually for the for the headphone and then it terminates into a 3.5 you also get a pair of replacement pads and you get this little fake leather pouch so overall, it's not a bad little presentation. By the way, the box that it came in was absolutely destroyed. It looked like somebody had stepped on them and uh, just smushed it to smithereens. So won't be showing the box. This is real wood here on the cups. It's, it's not a fake wood. It is real maple wood, which is, I'm surprised. I thought it would be some sort of replicated wood, but it is actual wood. And they feel decently built. I mean, they feel fairly solid except for this part here on the headband only having one single um, spring steel strip that goes through um, does make it feel a little bit flimsy right there but I don't think it's going to break anytime soon and then um, if we can take the cup off here you can see the exciting speaker the pads just pop right on you just kind of squish them on and you're done you have them back in place the pads have never gone back to a flat i don't know if you can see it on camera but there's some indentations in it it's just never returned to its actual form it's just kind of beat up um, the whole time that i've had these the other headphone that i purchased were the Hi-Fi JR70. Now they have a 70 mill millimeter dynamic in them. 16 ohms of impedance, 114 decibels of sensitivity, and a frequency response range of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The uh, documentation that's on the website claims that they are um, suitable for audio files, home studio, and they sound excellent in stereo high sensitivity and that they're comfortable. 
So the build of these is actually pretty decent. It feels all metal um, all the way around. Of course, you have spring steel here with this fake leather headband. And then you have some sort of um, lighter steel or um, aluminum of some sort that kind of wobbles and moves around. Um, and it doesn't really feel that sturdy. Your cups do rotate, uh, but they do not go all the way around. There is a lip that prevents it from going all the way around and through. Of course, you have your fake uh, grotto pads on these as well. And they connect just like you can just take them off and you have a view of your driver. And then they just slip right on just like the other ones. These ones are a little bit harder to put on but not much. There's a little lip that they go around right here. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to pause the video and be right back. Okay, so some of the other things that come along with the JR70 is this fabric cable. It's braided. Uh, you do get red and blue, red for right, blue for left. And then, and there are 3.5s going in, and then it terminates to a 3.5. And then you get a pair of extra pads, um, some more grotto knockoffs. The build of the JR70 is a little bit like a cheese grater here on the outside. It is a little bit rough when you run your fingers on it and it clinks when you move it. When you put them on your head, first of all, um, they made sure that it would fit anybody's head. These things are massive, really huge. But there is a problem with them, and that is they just don't bend here very well. So you don't get a really good seal, and then the headband does not curve, and so you don't really get a clamp. Now, you could bend this if you wanted um, to, to fit, and it I've done that a little bit, but it kind of always returns back into its own position. So... The JR70 doesn't fit me very well. How does it sound? So the JR70 sound has a lot of issues. For one, it rolls off extremely early in the bass. 50 hertz, they claim that it goes down to. I think it rolls off more around 150 hertz. Um, there is not much bass here at all. Uh, sub bass doesn't exist mid bass you get a very very light tap of bass there's not much body to it there's not a lot of heft to it it's very very light and the impact is just barely there there's not any texture at all upper bass doesn't really exist and um, the bass is extremely lightweight and it doesn't have very good details either and the resolution of what you do get isn't very good going into the mids the mids are extremely recessed to the point where they sound like you're talking out of a cave they are extremely extremely uh, hollow sounding and very very much recessed they are really really far back and you're talking in a cave and it's just not a very pleasant mid until you get to the upper mids or somewhere around four to about seven k eight k ish all of a sudden they're peaked and they're extremely aggressive and bright sounding but yet they still have very much a, a light note weight there's not much body at all tone and timbre is uh, not very natural and detail retrieval resolution like the bass is not very much and it's not very well resolved going into the treble the treble is elevated and it extends quite far but it's extremely harsh and very aggressive and it's an extremely hot treble this is a very much a upper mids and treble focused headphone 
the tone and timbre of the treble is not very good. It's very, it's all of the words you don't want to hear when you're describing treble, glassy, glary, shimmery, shiny, um, glaring, <laughs> hot, um, bright in the lowers. It's just, it's not a very pleasurable headphone in that regard. Tone and timbre, not natural at all. And then the details and resolution are not good. Soundstage, on the other hand, is actually quite wide. I was rather surprised at that, probably because you don't have much of a seal and uh, they're open backs. Unfortunately, the depth isn't very good and also n neither is the layering. Everything just sounds very compressed and very close together and fighting for position. They do not do very well in imaging. It's very much three blob. It's here, 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 and it jitters across the stage and there's gaps all over the place. Tone and timbre, not natural at all. Detail retrieval and resolution, uh, terrible. The JR70 is a waste of money. And even if you were to invest some modding to them and put some different pads on and maybe a different headband, this driver just does not have the abilities to really bring out information and sound pleasant, I don't believe. I think it's a waste of money. Now, for the... WTD3. The Grotto Knockoff. How does it sound? So the Grotto Knockoff actually is kind of pleasurable to listen to. I was rather surprised at that. It's got a little bit of warmth to it. It's got some note weight to it. And the bass has a little bit of impact and slam. Now it's not the most punchy and the most accurate sounding bass but you do get a little body and a little bit of kick every now and then doesn't have a whole lot of sub bass but you do get a little bit in the in the bass and the tonality isn't the most natural sounding but it's not super off-putting either detail retrieval is yeah it's all right for a 44 dollar headphone and the resolution is not very good the mids the mids have a little bit of body and they have a little bit of note weight to them and they at least engage you with the music. They're not super recessed. They're not super far forward. It is a little bit more on the intimate side and a little bit center focused. But for the most part, the mids have a little bit of engagement to them. They, again, tonality isn't the greatest. You're not going to have the best tone and timbre, but it's not off-putting. And then detail retrieval and resolution, like the bass, it's all right when it comes to detail retrieval. And the resolution isn't really that great. Treble. Treble is slightly rolled off. Doesn't have a lot of uh, sparkle and energy. It's a little bit on the more chill side. And it does kind of lack sparkle and energy to a degree. But like the mids and the bass, the tonality is okay. It's not the most natural, but it's also not off-putting. And then the detail retrieval is okay. And the resolution is all right. Soundstage, very intimate. Um, it is very close. You get this very much a, a center focus. Everything is kind of right here and very, very close to you, even though it is a semi-open headphone. It's very, very intimate sounding. Uh, imaging is not the greatest. It is three blob. You have right, left, and center, but the center is very, very strong. As it goes across, the kind of herky-jerky, er -er -er -er, as it goes across, has a little bit of depth to it and slight amount of layering. Not very much though. This does get confused very easily, um, especially on busier tracks. Detail retrieval is okay for a $44 headphone. Resolution is not really that good. Things get a little smeared, a little bit glary, a little bit glassy. And then tonality wise, the tone isn't the worst sounding, but it does, it has, okay tonality you're not going to be able to do any critical listening to it but it's not off-putting either resolution on the other hand uh, or excuse me timbre on the other hand not the most accurate you're going to have a difficulty telling differences between uh, instruments in family genres so if you're listening to a woodwind you'll know that it's kind of a clarinet saxophone or something along those lines but you're not going to be able to really differentiate it you're just going to know that's a woodwind same thing with brass instruments pianos guitars things like that they're all going to kind of sound the same within their families but it does okay for a 44 dollar headphone so i think that if you were to mod this and tweak it 
you might be able to make it something a little decent. It's not going to be anything spectacular, but it'll sound better than the stock form, especially if you open up the cup and make it a full sound, bring in some more air and space. It'll lose a little bit of that stuffiness and maybe give you a little bit more depth and layering. But uh, obviously change the pads and you would have um, a little bit more comfort, maybe a little bit better seal. But is it really worth it? I mean, they're $44.00. If you're a tweaker or a modder, maybe. But I wouldn't waste my money on the $67 one, the JR70. This thing is not good. Now, I don't think the drivers are any good at all and wouldn't be able to um, be really improved upon uh, with any modding. Not saying that the drivers are any good in the WTD3, but they showed a little bit more potential than the other. With all that said, $44 for the WTD3, $67 for the JR70. Are they really worth it? No. You can get better headphones for similar price points from manufacturers that are known to make quality products. So I wouldn't waste the time and the money on Timu. And I would just stick with purchasing a more reputable company and a more uh, better built, better quality product. It's been Dave, The Honest Audio File. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video, and check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact the channel, follow the channel, support the channel. All that kind of stuff is listed down below. Speaking of support and channel, I want to thank my supporters through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you very much for all that you provide to the channel. It's much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there's various ways that you can do that through one-time gifts with PayPal and Venmo. And uh, also YouTube has some options. And then if you're interested in supporting the channel on a monthly basis, you can do that with uh, Patreon and YouTube memberships where you can get early access to videos and also you can get access to my private discord if you want to ask for that so if you're interested in supporting the channel it'd be much appreciated also down below there's all kinds of other information regarding con uh music recommendations gear recommendations uh, ranking lists and all kinds of other things so check out the links down below and lastly don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy <laughs>